Thanks to Nobel laureate Dr. Joseph E. Murray and other medical pioneers, the innovation of the human kidney transplant and organ transplantation in general has allowed thousands of people who otherwise would have died to live full and successful lives. Doctors were inundated with World War II soldiers suffering from injuries too severe to be treated overseas. One of these doctors, Joseph Murray, was beginning his medical career and was about to treat a patient named Charles Woods who would change the course of medical history. When Murray first saw the young aviator, Woods was flying supply missions across the treacherous Himalayan mountains into China. On one flight, the plane crashed, the gas tank leaked, and 28,000 pounds of fuel exploded, enveloping the plane and pilots in flames. Woods was the only survivor. However, he still had a long journey ahead of him in order to stay alive. The doctors needed to cover Woods' body with new skin. Normally, doctors would take skin grafts from the patient's own body to cover burned areas. However, Woods not only did not have enough healthy skin to do this, but skin grafts required surgery that Woods was too weak to handle. So the doctors had to use skin from a cadaver called an allograft, which typically results in the body rejecting the foreign skin by shrinking and falling off the body within days. However, for Woods, the allograft lasted about a month, giving Woods time to recover so that his own skin could be used as a second graft. A year and a half later, Woods was finally released from the hospital. Although skin grafts had been around for a while, this was a new technique for Murray. Woods' case was the first time that he was introduced to the ideas of rejection and transplantation. However, Murray understood the problems behind his organ transplant. He knew that the organ would simply be attacked by the body's immune system and fail. Yet for Woods, rejection of the foreign skin was postponed from the two weeks it should have taken to a month. Murray observed that it was most likely Woods' weakened immune system that allowed for this postponement. Murray got his chance to test his hypothesis nine years later with the case of Richard and Ronald Herrick. On October 26, 1954, Richard Herrick was admitted to the hospital for kidney failure. Specifically, Richard had chronic nephritis, a deadly enlargement of the kidneys. At the time, people with kidney failure had a chance to live through dialysis that filtered out the blood. However, not only do the patients have to be hooked up to the machine for hours, but sometimes the patient's kidneys, like Richard's, were too damaged for the patient to survive. Death loomed for Richard. Luckily, he had a twin, Ronald, and little did they know they were about to make medical history. Murray theorized that since Richard and Ronald were twins, that the body wouldn't notice a difference between the organs. However, to ensure that the brothers were actually identical twins, they had to undergo 17 genetic tests which later proved that they were in fact identical. The next step was not the operation. There were ethical questions to be considered. This was a great shift in thinking for doctors who took an oath to do no harm. After consulting doctors, lawyers, and even clergy, Murray reasoned that the benefits that Richard would receive from the transplant would outweigh the few consequences that Ronald would have to endure. The surgery began at 8.15 a.m. and at 9.50, Ronald's kidney was removed. The donor kidney was wrapped in a cold, wet towel and was placed in a stainless steel basin to be transported to the adjacent operating room where Richard waited. The clock was ticking. The healthy kidney could only be without fresh blood for a short time and before Richard's blood could flow into the kidney, his blood vessels had to be attached to those of the donor kidney. When everything was ready to go, the doctors released the clamps from Richard's iliac artery and veins. 
even being without blood for one hour and 22 minutes, the donor kidney turned a healthy pink and started producing urine. It had been successful, and Murray, the transplant team, and Richard and Ronald Herrick were famous. They had proved that the innovation of organ transplants was not a thing of science fiction. Transplantation really worked and could save lives. However, this innovation did not come without its criticisms. Doctors argued that this type of operation was limited to identical twins and therefore had no application for the masses. The Herrick transplant precipitated the development of immunosuppressant drugs, which made the first non-identical twin kidney transplant possible, which further yet led to the first cadaveric donor kidney transplant. This innovation's legacy is not only the transplant itself, but the resulting work in stem cell research and in growing functioning organs in the laboratory, thus eliminating the need for donor organs altogether and the use of toxic immunosuppressant drugs. Modern transplantation has become extremely common. Today, there are many other organ transplants, such as heart, liver, lungs, corneas, bone marrow, and many more organs and tissues. There are even transplants where the patient receives multiple organs, saving thousands of lives. Not only has the innovation of organ transplants saved lives, but it has changed the way we think about our bodies after death. We now have the option for our organs to be used as organs for transplants after we die. For 21-year-old Jason Ray, his decision to be an organ donor had a huge impact on the life of Ronald Griffin. But Jason's most famous role was as the mascot for the Tar Heels. Jason had a level of enthusiasm himself uh, that uh, you could tell immediately, and I think that that's something that did fire up the crowd. On the afternoon of March 23rd, just hours before Carolina was scheduled to play USC in the East Regionals, Jason Ray left his hotel and went walking along this busy New Jersey highway. He was going to get a bite to eat. She said my son had been struck by an automobile and he was in real serious condition and we needed to get there. The driver who hit Jason stopped and called 911. It was clear Jason was badly hurt. Jason had suffered severe head trauma. There was no sign of brain activity. So a representative from the New Jersey Sharing Network, a group that facilitates tissue and organ transplants, was called in to broach a subject that was not easy for his parents to hear, organ donation. I was thinking everything except sharing uh, his organs with anybody at that point. But this difficult decision had already been made by Jason himself, evident on his driver's license. As one family grieved, another got a ray of hope. For over a decade, 58-year-old Ronald Griffin had suffered from congestive heart failure. How weak in your mind, how weak did you get? If I rolled over in the bed, it was like I ran a marathon. I couldn't brush my teeth, I couldn't comb my hair, I couldn't do any of that. This former postal worker and grandfather of two was one of nearly 100,000 Americans on the organ transplant waiting list. He and his wife Stephanie feared that he would die before the right heart ever came. And at the time of Jason Ray's death, Jason's heart was a perfect match. As Ronald was prepped for surgery, his doctor came in with news. He said, I took care of you. I got you the best heart available. And then he said, you should become a North Carolina fan. So on that day, Jason Ray and Ronald Griffin became forever linked. Not only has the innovation of organ transplants impacted the history of medicine by creating a whole new field of work and research, but it has changed people's lives. Dr. Murray was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1990 for his remarkable work. His observation leaves a legacy through grandfathers enjoying their grandchildren, young men raising a family and having careers, geniuses changing the way we communicate, and little brothers who love me.